G'day. Today we are going to configure Ubuntu for Pro Audio production using Bitwig. You can find all hyperlinks, Linux commands and notes in the description below. The first thing we will do is ensure our system is up to date. To do this we run apt update and apt dist upgrade. I've already updated my system so there are no packages to install for me. A few packages we do need to install before continuing though are git, vim and build essential. Next we will install the KX Studio repositories. KX Studio is a collection of applications and plugins for audio production. The main tool that we are concerned with is Cadence. So let's follow the instructions on the KX Studio repository page. First we'll install the dependencies. We'll download the package file. Install the package file. Update our sources. Now we can install Cadence. Ensure that you choose yes when asked to enable real-time process priority. Next we will use a tool called Real-Time Config Quick Scan. This is a Perl script that is freely available from GitHub. Simply clone the repository, change into the directory, and run the script. It runs through a checklist and will report on things that we need to change. All items in red need to be addressed. For Pro Audio, we need to ensure that we are running our CPU at maximum speed. To do this, we will enable the Performance CPU Governor. This is facilitated by a tool called CPU Freak Utils, so let's install it. Now we'll tell Linux that we want to use the Performance Governor. And we will disable the service that sets the governor to on demand, which is a power saving governor. Let's look at our quick scan checklist again. We've addressed the governor. The next two items we will address are swappiness and max user watches. We'll edit the etc sysctl.conf file and add new values at the bottom. Some Linux systems don't use a swap file. In those cases, you won't need the swappiness option. The swappiness option sets the percentage of free memory remaining before swapping to disk. And the max user watches parameter sets the maximum number of files your system can monitor with iNotify. Modifying these parameters will ensure your system operates at its most capable. Next, we will add our user to the audio group. Much of what I am teaching here is described on the Linux audio wiki page. There's a vast amount of information 
on this page and it's very useful to read it. Next we will set values for real-time priority and maximum locked-in memory space. To do this we will edit the etc security limits.d audio.conf file. Note that this file was configured for us when we said yes to the real-time process priority question while installing Cadence earlier. Now we will configure grub options to enable threaded IRQs and disable the spectre mitigations. Again, the Linux audio wiki is valuable for this configuration. We can see that this installation of Ubuntu is using the generic kernel. Let's check what options our kernel has been built with. We will add the thread IRQs and mitigations equals off values to our grub config. Let's edit etc default grub and add the appropriate values. Save the file and rebuild grub. We've addressed all of the real time config quick scan items. Now it's time to reboot. We're back from a reboot. Let's run the real-time config script again to ensure that we pass all checks. Yep, all green goods is good. Now we'll run Cadence and start Jack. Jack is the audio connection kit that is at the core of any Linux Pro Audio system. Cadence does its own checks and here it's reporting that our kernel is not ideal. In my experience, all modern Linux kernels are sufficient for Pro Audio, but it won't hurt for us to install a low latency kernel. Ubuntu ships with a low latency kernel, so let's install it. When our new low latency kernel is installed, we can remove the generic kernel. Let's run an apt auto remove to clean up unused packages. And now it's time to reboot again. Let's make sure that we've booted using the new low latency kernel. Yep, we have. Let's run Cadence. Good news, it is giving us all green too. Let's configure Jack. Choose the ULSA driver and make sure you have a device selected. I have a Rode USB mic and it is automatically detected in all modern Linux systems. A full discussion of sample rate and buffer size is beyond the scope of this video, but I've provided a link to a recommended video in the description below. For now, leave the default values, hit OK, and we'll start Jack. If all goes well, then the Jack status will show started and real time will show yes. We can see that our DSP load is very low and we have no X runs. We do have a pretty high latency of 21.3 milliseconds, so let's see if we can reduce that. We will increase the sample rate to 96,000 and the buffer size to 128. Starting Jack again, we can see our latency is down to 2.7 milliseconds. Excellent. Our DSP usage has increased, but it's still very low. 
but we selected 96,000 as our sample rate, so why is it showing 48,000? Sample rates can be limited by your hardware. In, in my case, the Rode USB device I use has a hardware limit of 48,000. So let's choose our final values. 48,000 and 128 work well for my hardware. You may need to experiment with these values in order to balance latency against X runs. We have a final latency of 2.7 milliseconds and no X runs. Now that we have a stable audio core, let's get to the good stuff and install Bitwig. Bitwig is a fantastic door in its own right, but is made even better by the fact that it runs on all three major operating systems. The other door that I use and recommend for Linux is Reaper. Check out reaperblog.net for an amazing set of videos related to Reaper. To download, click on the Linux icon on the right, and the Bitwig deb package will start to download. In the meantime, we need to prepare for the installation. Bitwig uses some i386 libraries, so we need to enable that architecture. Now that the download has finished, let's install Bitwig. Let's change to our downloads directory and apt install the package. Bitwig have some fantastic videos on their website and on their YouTube channel. Our Jack server is still nice and stable, no X runs. Let's get to making music. Bitwig offers a demo with no time limit, although you won't be able to save your projects. When you first run Bitwig, it will ask you to install the essentials package. This gives you the basic instrument and plugin presets. So let's install that. While the Essentials package is installing, let's make sure that our audio is configured in Bitwig. Go to the Settings tab, Audio page, and ensure that the driver model selected is Jack. Excellent. Bitwig has an amazing help system. On the Help tab, you will find links to videos, the 500 plus page user manual, and more. And once you get into Bitwig, the help system is even more amazing. Now that the Essentials package is installed, let's create our first project. Click on the User tab, New Project, and voila, we are ready to make music using Bitwig on Ubuntu. If you have any questions, or if something didn't make sense or it didn't work, please comment below and I'll help you out. I'd love for you to like and subscribe this video, but more importantly, I'd love you to go and make your own music. Have fun. See you later.